Hello, this is Bart Pastorino from Codenomicon. I'm here with Heike Rontula, Principal Systems Engineer. He's going to show you technical deep dive for fuzzing Wi-Fi. He's going to take a smartphone and use the Codenomicon Defense X version 10 to crash the phone. I'm now going to turn it over to Heike to present. Thank you, Bart. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do today is that um, I have Android smartphone and um, we're going to use Codenomic on Defense to crash it, as Bart explained. Um, it is not the latest model of Android phone, but the software in it, it's uh, the Android version 4, so that's pretty new. And what we're going to do today is that um, I'm using the Android phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot. And um, the settings I have set for the phone is that it's an open network, since uh, all around us at the airports and cafeterias we have a lot of open and available networks for the customers to use. So this demo will show you how easy it can be to crash an open Wi-Fi hotspot. All right, so um, here you can see on my screen I have the Android phone here. Um, I have pre-configured the phone. It's Android AP, the network SSID, and the security is open as I explained. And the portable Wi-Fi hotspot is enabled. And let's see if I can get the image sharper. Well, that will do at the moment. Um, I'm going to move the view of the phone to the side here so we can monitor it at all times. All right, okay, so here we have Codenomic on Defense 610. And uh, on the left side, you can see uh, the test suites I have available. Uh, the Codenomic on Defense 6 works as a platform where you can load different uh, test suites to test different protocols. And today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use 802.11 access point test suite to try to crash the phone. <clears throat> All right, so we have it loaded here. So what I'm using as hardware uh, is just my laptop, so Defense 6 doesn't require any specific hardware unless you're using the wireless test suites as we are now. So I have Codenomicon uh, Wi-Fi dongle attached to my computer and uh, here you can see the um, access point test suite from the scan button. I can start scanning for available networks and it will show all the networks that are in, in, in range here. All right. so as I selected the Android AP to be the name we're going to select that one here, and Defense6 will automatically fetch the settings for that network, so you don't have to do anything else. If it was a, a password-protected network, the only thing you'd have to do is enter the password and start the testing as well. So the next step here we have is interoperability. With this, we can, we can test if the test suite can interact with the test target. And we will be doing that by sending valid messages towards the target. All right, so let's start probing. Okay, looks good. So we got four out of five, which is enough for us. And the next thing I'm going to go to is instrumentation. Uh, instrumentation uh, is um, our method of verifying um, if the, if the test case is passed or failed. So what we do is uh, we send a malicious test case with, uh, that includes malicious data. And after each test case, we send a valid message, which is by the uh, specifications of the protocol. And with that, uh, with that valid message, we can see if the target is still running and if it's still responding to the messages we're sending. And if uh, if the valid message is passed, we can move forward to, uh, to the next malicious test case. Okay, so we selected the valid case instrumentation. 
Um, so here, from test cases, you can see the different test groups we can test the target. Um, we have, uh, in this test suite, we have over 50,000 test cases. And um, because it takes a while to test all, all of them, a few hours, and I know where the press is supposedly, so I can start testing from test case 27,500 and towards the end. All right, so um, now as you can see, we are starting the test there. And all we have to do is just uh, press play and the test cases start running. Okay, from this view you can see the, the, uh, the current test case through the running time, which test case it's running now, and if there are past test cases. And um, if there are any failed ones, we will see uh, some red over here and a message that uh, the test target has failed. So, um, alrighty. So, as you can see from the screen, the phone has rebooted completely. It didn't only uh, stop the process that's running in the Android, but it rebooted the whole phone. And um, previously I tried getting some logs from the phone, but the crash was so fast, so quick, that um, the Android system didn't have time to write anything to the logs. So I'm not showing that today. Okay, so um, now the phone is still rebooting. We can go here to results. And this will show you the test cases we just ran. You can see the test group and what's the number of the test case. And when you can see here the red color that indicates that there was some kind of an issue with the test target. And the diagnosis says that it's a denial of service. Well, obviously, since the phone is still rebooting, so it doesn't respond to anything. Then we can move to main log. It will as well show the test cases, but this shows the test cases on a message level. So this is the test case where we started, 27,500. You can see on the green, these are the messages that we sent to the target, the blue ones that were received. So because the um, <coughs> uh, the malicious data wasn't in the first message in the sequence that we sent, we have to proceed according to the sequence that is used. Some authentication messages, association, and on the on the first, third, fourth, fifth message we sent that included the malicious data. We got, uh, of course, this was passed this test case, so we got a response, and again a few messages to the target system, and um, that's how basically the testing with defensives works. So if I scroll down here, here we can see the failed test case. And uh, it proceeded as before in the example. And after the malicious message, we still got a response back from the target. So the crash wasn't imminent. It didn't happen instantly. So um, after that, we sent uh, a few messages back. But then authentication failed since we tried the instrumentation, which included the, um, the valid data, but we didn't get response to that. And of course, this crash is very obvious since the phone rebooted itself. But uh, in some cases, there's just the protocol stack or, or the process that's crashing. So the valid case instrumentation is an, is an excellent way in, in, in many of the protocols to check the health of the target system. And uh, if we go check the phone here, oh, see the portable hotspot. It's of course turned off by default. Let's see if the settings are still the same. Yep, the security is open. Let's cancel that. Let's try to reproduce this issue. Um, Defensive is a very good tool for reproducing any any issues you are experiencing. So let's use this to um, select and rerun test cases. 
right from here you can see the, um, there was one denial of service test case and it is recommended to pick test groups since uh, in a test group we are testing the same fields with just different values for example but let's see if we can crash the phone indeed with one single test case usually it is recommended to pick the group because it's not always the exact value that in this case crashes the target but it might be any malicious value that we give to some field all right so pick individual test cases and uh, okay so here we went back to the test case selection and the test case number it's 27608 before we start running let's do the probing again just to make sure there's connectivity all right so again we're getting four out of five, five and I'm happy with that so um, let's press play and see what happens okay so as you can see the phone is rebooting again and we could easily reproduce this issue and uh, from my earlier testing I noticed that the, that there are different test cases from the same, same test group crashed the phone as well so it's not this single test case but all the test cases from that test group are prone to crash the phone so um, if we check the um, message here that crashed the phone this time so this uh, is a very helpful tool to see the exact data that is sent towards the target system so this is the, the complete message that was sent and here you can see uh, on the red that that is the the altered and malicious data so in this test case it was um, the SSID and we just repeated the tag length and value in that message and this was too much for the phone and if we go back to um, to see the previous test run oh sorry here here we go to this message this is the one message before here you can see the same kind of anomaly just different values added to the SSID so as you noticed when I was rerunning the one test case it took a few seconds before the phone rebooted so in many cases um, it's good to narrow down the tests test cases you are you're running because it the crash doesn't always happen instantly so in this case it might have been two or three, three test cases before where the actual uh, malfunction happened in the phone so but because we are having the same kind of anomalies in the same test group we can still reproduce this issue with any test case of that same test group okay I think this was enough of the um, crashing the Android phone and um, I'm going to hand it back to Bart. Thanks, Heike. Thank you. So what we've seen today is a technical deep dive of the Wi-Fi fuzzing. Thank you again for joining us today. If you'd like to find out more about Codenomicon, please visit us at info at codenomicon.com for more information about Codenomicon Defensix 10. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. This concludes our webinar.